some may look at these electronic hamster G-Force looking dudes and think they're a relic of the early 2000s. I sure did. In fact, I didn't even remember these guys until I stumbled into a vintage toy store looking for Webkin's knockoffs. And just look at him. Listen to the sounds he makes. But upon doing some research, they actually lasted way longer than I thought they did and went through way more phases than I was prepared for. Please allow me to impart this useless knowledge on you. Video TV show. Are you? Are you? But lovers, how many of you had Zuzu pets? Because I sure did. Zuzu pets are gonna go to a hamster fashion show. The only one I know I had for sure was Nugget. What an icon. And what a perfect name. In 2009, Sepia LLC launched Zuzu Pets and they exploded in popularity. This Chicago Tribune article from December 7, 2009 even said that they were sold out in Target, Walmart, and Toys R Us, with people reselling them for as much as $95, even though the retail price was only about $8 to $10. First lesson in economics, supply versus demand. If demand is high and supply is low, bada bing bada boom, our wallets are emptied and capitalism wins once again. It sucks. This article also revealed how they were marketing these toys as the best alternative to live hamsters because they quote, don't poop, stink, or die. Which sounds like they're more so trying to convince the adults than the kids because I've never heard them say that in any of the commercials. And they don't die. The 2009 release included 40 Zuzu pets between Gen 1 and Gen 10. Now here are my favorites from each. Pip Squeak, Nugget, Moo, Peachy. Peach. Shamrock, Bitsy, Pookie, Snickle Fritz a precursor to the Rockstar series and the first distinctly different design choice. And finally, Pumpkin and Green Bean. Along with the first 10 generations, there were also four exclusive European Zuzus, which included Moppet and Tulip, the first of many non-hamster Zuzu pets. They also released seven special edition Zuzus, my favorite of which, of course, being Luigi. Where's the Bowser Zuzu, am I right? Upon further research, Luigi's birthmark is a pizza because he came with the pizza playset. But more importantly than that, it reminded me that each of these guys have birthmarks which coincide with their personality and what they're associated with. Reminds me of something. I can't quite seem to put my hoof on it. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> now from 2010 on, this brand really has something to prove. Everyone predicted they would be like a one year fad. So how do they combat this? By throwing goddamn everything at the wall. I'm not even joking. In 2010, they released Rockstar's Wild Bunch, Kung Zoo, and the Princess line. Quite the departure from their regular schmegular hamsters of 2009. I remember when I was younger being hype for the Wild Bunch release. Part of the appeal to me is that the animals they chose still fit in that small rodent type design. It was different, but it didn't move too far off from the original concept. I didn't even realize the Kung Zoo line existed until I stumbled into that vintage toy store, which started this whole rabbit hole or, or hamster hole. <laughs> but honestly, it feels like they were marketing this one more to young boys. Train your ninja or special forces hamster in the ways of Kung Zoo. No! Apparently the one I found in the store was Stonewall. And based on his little bio, he's a bit of a loose cannon. So I looked at the link on the packaging and as usual, I rushed to the Wayback Machine only for them to tell me I can't see the page because Adobe Flash is fucking dead. I'll never not be mad. So here's some of the gameplay from the website on YouTube. They also had a DS game, which I considered buying, but ever since I bought the Shining Stars one, I've had trust issues. She has arrived. Let's go, gamers. Gamers, I think we got scammed. Ooh, I think we got scammed, gamers. And naturally, to cover all their bases after the roller coaster fighting boyish spin on the Zuzu pets, next comes the princess line. <laughs> I don't really have much to say, but look at Ribbit the Frog. Look at how the little button, instead of it being the nose like how it usually is, it's a tongue. How freaking cute is this? Also, there's a DS game for the princess toys as well, which is pleasantly surprising. Let's go, girl gamers! Just to be clear, I only point out this gender demographic because it is very apparent that's what they were trying to do between the vibe of the marketing and the packaging. Many will battle. An enchanted kingdom. Now on to 2011. I can say with confidence, this is when Zuzu Pets officially fell off my radar because, oh my god, they made puppies? and very, very few cats. These 21 dogs and three cats were the only thing they released that year other than the babies, which feels like the beginning of the end. Well, the end part one, we'll get into it later. But in my humble opinion, this is where it feels like their niche gets muddied. Every other brand of plushies and electronic toys has done cats and dogs. This move did not set them apart. If anything, they just entered the most oversaturated market instead of doubling down on the one they started. This business move is very confusing to me, but maybe I don't know shit, because according to this wiki, this was their third most successful line behind Kung Zhu. Next, the babies. Look at them. 
first I thought they were silly and gimmicky. Like, they don't even have wheels. They need an adult to push them around in a stroller like, like actual babies. I don't know if they meant to be clever, but uh, like, it, it makes sense. The first Suzu Babies actually came out in 2009, but didn't get their own launch until 2011 for their second generation. The Lullaby Hamsters are the baby's caregivers, and oh my god, there's only four of them. Look at how many babies there are, bless their hearts. Also, all the caregivers are girls. When's the deadbeat dad line dropping? In 2012, the Zuzu Pets got their own McDonald's Happy Meal toy to promote their first movie. Now, this is a weird tangent. Maybe this is because I haven't watched cable or because I'm not a literal child, but I have no idea what the Happy Meal toys are now. So, uh, field trip. Guys, nothing could have prepared me for this. The toy is for the masked singer? Uh? What the fuck? Okay, let's see who I get. Apparently, I can also play with my little masked guy on a phone. I am sometimes called Bigfoot. Who am I? Dude, this sucks. Can you believe it was the mass Singer? What an exciting adventure we went on. Other than just the Happy Meal toys, Zuzu Pets released Zufari and the ponies. What the hell happened to the hamsters? But they've expanded so much, you're thinking to yourself. They even got a freaking movie. They must be at the top of their game. They were discontinued shortly after. Zuzu, now I know I was wrong. I messed up and now you're gone. Their disappearance was very hush-hush, unlike me a few seconds ago. Well, I'm sorry I neglected you, oh, I never expected you to run away and leave me feeling this empty. Your squeaky squeaky sounds like music to me. But this isn't the end of their story. Before we discuss their rebirth, let's explore the wiki because it is such a fun time. Firstly, this in-depth lore section? <clears throat> Zuzu pets come from the Zooniverse. They speak Zooish, a hamster version of English. One of my favorite things about browsing through this wiki is seeing all the unreleased toys, because some of the stories of how they came into the light is fascinating. It feels like forbidden knowledge no one cares about. Some unreleased toys were from pre-existing lines. For example, Snowball, Boo, Chewy, Ruby Zoo, and Billy are all from the beginning. Snowball, despite never being released, had a redesign. Boo and Chewy, I love this picture of Chewy, that's very blurry, and then the caption warns you that it's blurry. Anyway, despite those two never being released, was featured in the Zooniverse tour. Now what in the Sam hell is a Zooniverse tour? It's an event I wish I went to is what it is. It looked like a mini fair. Games, obstacle courses, this truck you can get Zuzu pets from. Now remember kids, don't take toys from strangers, especially out of a car. Unless it's the Zuzu pets truck, let's go! The unreleased Ruby Zoo was seen at an Australian toy fair and also sold on eBay. Is this a case of employees stealing merchandise? Or is the company chill about people taking what they're not using? I'm unsure, but it seems like this sort of thing happened happened a lot. There's a whole line of Kung Zoo monsters that never saw the light of day. And these wiki pages make me cackle. We have Jump Scare. Jump Scare is not an official name. We have Bloodlust. Bloodlust is not an official name. And don't forget about Pyromancer. It's not an official name. Aside from just that, look at these alleged unreleased Zuzu pets. Uh... What is this cryptid Bigfoot ass shit? What am I looking at? Light blue hips and an underbite. Yeah, I think I see it now. There was another completely unreleased line called Zoolantis. What an appropriate mythical name. Even though it looks pretty cool, I am so skeptical. Truthfully, I think somebody skinned a stuffed animal and like sewed it onto a Zuzu pet. Because what are these pictures? Why would they be in the normal packaging? Why wouldn't the packaging have something Zoolantis themed? How did people get their hands on this? Why did this one not have an explanation like the other ones? I've seen many toy modifications and art of stuffed animals and dolls, and I'm sure people can do the same thing with Zuzu pets. So, how do we know this is real? Maybe I'm missing something. I need more proof. Next, we will talk about the spin-offs and knockoffs, and here's where the wiki's obvious bias comes into play a lot. So the spin-off section is dedicated to Sepia LLC's other toys that are similar enough to Zuzu Pets. The wiki describes them as unique. I'll be the judge of that. Okay, so first we have the Amazing Zoos that were released in 2014. Although the theme of magician mice is very cute, unique, 
It's a combination of Littlest Pet Shop with their tiny plastic design, and of course Zuzu Pets with the way they move around. And the fact that they can squeak and shit. Moving on to the other spinoff, The Happies, also released in 2014, they are essentially Zuzu Pet puppies that can also do tricks with the help of a bone-shaped remote control, or a fishbone-shaped remote control if you're controlling the cats. Again, cute, absolutely. Unique? Now for the knockoffs. Now let me just say, most of these are completely valid. What makes me laugh is how angry the wording is. For example, the fake in their title pages. I don't know why, it's so accusatory and fun. Imagine I did that with all the Webkin's knockoffs. Dinosaur. Fake! It's incredible, honestly. Hurry up, hamster. Fake. These fakes were sold in Cracker Barrel. Baby Guppy. Fake. Distributed by an unknown company in Japan. These fakes came in rectangular yellow packaging with a clear case. Like how it's clear you ripped off our precious Zuzu pets. Fucking fakers. Go Go Rabbit, dare I say, isn't a knockoff. It's just straight up fake. Look at this thing. It's disgusting. There's even a hair on it. What is this? They even showed it pull apart where we see a whole ass train car. This was fan made for sure. When you look up Go Go Rabbit, there's no packaging or anything. This is the only picture of it that exists. This was definitely made from different toy parts, Sid from Toy Story style. And I don't want to look at it anymore. <laughs> Here's where the Zuzu Pets fan saltiness can come through a little bit. They call For Real Friends Furry Frenzy a knockoff. Now I do see what they mean. While For Real Friends was definitely trying to capitalize off of the success of Zuzu Pets by creating a similar functioning toy, the wiki even admitted that this was before Zuzu Pets released their puppies line. So I don't know. I don't see anything blatantly offensive here. Here's where the Zuzu Pets have a rebirth. So while they were shut down in 2013, they were planning to have a reboot in 2015 with these cute little designs, oh. but they were scrapped. Oh. The real reboot happened in 2017 with these expressive little faces and one that even had glasses. Very cartoony. Well, there's a reason for that. These came out to promote the TV show that came in 2016. The show is called The Zuzus. It had one season and 26 episodes and aired on Disney Channel. I did not realize this toy ended up getting a Disney Channel animated series. Let's watch an episode. But first, and this is totally in the same day. It's about tribe. It's about power. That took 19 whole seconds. I had an edible before this to celebrate the day. It tastes bitter and beery. Ah! A child? A, ch a child. No. It's been too long. We forgot how to do this while not sober. <laughs> Let me tell you about my best friends. They're my best friends. <laughs> Let me tell you about Ben. His name is Ben. They're Ben. Which kind of does go hard, to be fair. Look at my hair going. Ah, baby, don't rest around because, because she, she is my baby. <laughs> she don't mess around. <laughs> wait. She, wait. <laughs> is she six foot four? You guys ready? Ready. Affirmative. Yup. Uh, I still think this is a bad idea. <sighs> well, I don't know about this one. Are you sure this is a good idea? Kids shows like this, again, I might be judging harshly right from the beginning, but it feels like an AI could write kids shows at this point. Like, honestly, now that we've actually experienced ChatGPT, it's like script writing <laughs> abilities. Glasses Girl says, are you sure this is a good idea? Before the gang proceeds to do something pretty silly. And they face challenges and obstacles along the way. That, for damn sure. Yeah. Challenges and, and obstacles, obstacles along, along the way. way. Challenges, challenges and, and obstacles, obstacles along, along the way. way. It doesn't seem to be a nest up there, which means its mother isn't around to look after it. I can look after it, and we'll have a please, Mom. You have to find out how to take care of it properly. Yes. Make sure you care for it properly. She celebrates flinging her four <laughs> hamster pets into the air. I'll do the research and write it down, but you have to follow it to a T. Deal. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> oh, this girl's like a Timmy Turner type kid. Yeah. Which is fascinating because I will say, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like this type of mischievous child is kind of rare for the for the kid to be a girl. Like this level of yeah. shithead energy, have you ever seen from a girl main protagonist? The episode <laughs> ends with her <laughs> making the egg into an omelet. POV, I'm Shane Dawson. Oh my god, is she a sociopath? Night creates heat. He's so old. <laughs> oh, that's just a thing that she does. Her little friends will just be sitting on her and she just it's flings like, them. It's like it's, it's an ongoing joke. It's 
Why does his tongue look like that? I think they're being weird. Why is that like a demon tongue? Yeah, why is that like, why is he a member of Kiss? <laughs> wow, she literally keeps dropping them. So the bird was chirping all night and she realizes, hey, motherhood isn't for me actually. This <laughs> is a PSA for birth control? <laughs> and in other news, Frankie's mom kind of has it going on, I will say. Frankie's mom has got, got it going, going on. on. Let's see this. She said, let's zoo this and oh. said, let's do this. Oh, that's pretty clever. I literally almost forgot oh. we were watching a show about Zuzu pets, so that actually put me back into it. This is not what I thought the show would be. They just shoehorn Zuzu pets into a very, very normal kids cartoon. I don't know. I thought there would be more about their personalities, and they're so just like sidekicks. Yeah. I feel like the hamsters don't even have to be there. Let's get this bird up in the air. <laughs> This kid's a terrible pet owner. So this dude was trying to get a snack pack, but instead he realized he had the parachute, and Hi Athena thought this was so fucking funny. <laughs> but instead of the backpack opening and there being a parachute, it's just hot dogs. And then they die. Her idea is, no, the bird will fly right now and be able to carry this whole ass hamster on her back. Dude. That is a wild theory. You guys should be getting like a picnic blanket ready, stretching it out on four sides. Like, do not rely on the bird right now. <laughs> you did it! You're flying! Yeah, based. Oh my. <laughs> he turns. The propeller just slices her up. Why are they acting so calm? The stakes are so high. So much can go wrong. That was crazy! This is stressing me out. Past Athena, take it away. In 2018, Zuzu Pets got discontinued again. What a tumultuous journey. You know, I've heard that sometimes hamsters get stunned and play dead and then come back to life only to die again shortly after. And that's exactly what Zuzu Pets did. Although Zuzu Pets lasted for almost 10 years, which is three times the amount of time real hamsters are alive for. So props to that. Before we wrap up, let's see what Sepia LLC is up to now because I don't think I've ever seen any of their other toys. So they have cats versus pickles, dogs versus squirrels, bears versus donuts. Why, why is this their thing? Cats versus pickles. Cats are scared of pickles, but pickles just want love. Cats are scared of pickles, but pickles just want love. What a loose concept. And they look like little Squishmallows, of course, because everyone wants to be Squishmallows. I watched the commercial from their website. Apparently on YouTube, it has 38 million views. So I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Clearly, this is a hit. I have cats in real life, like living cats. And I also love eating pickles. So what can your toy give me that the joy of the real life things cannot? That was the history of Zuzu Pets. Let me know if I should watch the movie one of these days, because that could be fun, maybe. I don't know. And have a great day. Next week is... Is super Y lore. Bye!